Hello everyone, it is March 2nd, uh, Thursday, and we are in Chapter 3 of Hatchet. We are now in a new material that we did not read at school, and we, are, um, we opened the chapter with the boys in the cellar because they were punished with how they behaved with the family that came to, um, to adopt them, and we get a um, flashback. So we're going to see what this flashback is telling us. It's going to tell us a little bit more about their past and who they are. The cellar was a large dungeon-like room below the kitchen. At one time, the walls had been whitewashed, but the paint was spotty and the old bricks showed through. Above, a ground-level window let in a shaft of light. Cupboards lined the back. A narrow wooden table sat in the center of the room, its benches pushed against a side wall. At least it's cool down here, said Frankie. Mike sat on a bench and leaned against the bricks. Frankie sat next to him. Sorry, I bit him. Mike tousled his hair. I'm not. Frankie stared at the padlocked cupboards. What do you think's inside? Probably everything she ever took from a boy, said Mike. Like the harmonicas Granny gave us? Like the harmonicas, said Mike. The first day they arrived, Pennyweather had confiscated them, saying if she let every boy have one, she'd be batty from all the noise. She dropped them into a box, never to be seen again. Okay, let's pause there and talk about that word confiscated. What does that mean? We can look at the context. She confiscated them, saying if she let every boy have one, she'd be mat batty. So what does that mean she did? She took them. Right, confiscated means to take away so that it's not your property anymore. Frankie lay down on the bench, put his hands behind his head, and stared at the ceiling. Tell me the story again. Mike didn't have to ask which one. There was only one story Frankie ever wanted. It's your turn to tell, said Mike, knowing full well that Frankie would do most of the talking anyway. Okay, said Frankie. Our dad and mom lived in a town with a lumber mill. Allentown, said Mike. I'm telling, member, said Frankie. Allentown. When I was just a tiny baby, there was an accident at the mill and our dad died. Our mom brought us to Granny's because we didn't have any money and the lords were going to turn us out on the street. Landlords, said Mike. Remember, a landlord is someone who, who owns a property and you rent from them. Yeah, so our mom got a job at the diner, and we all lived together at Granny's, and it was crowded. And where was that? asked Mike. Philly. That's what the lads call Philadelphia, for short. Philly. Mike nodded, remembering Granny's tiny third-floor apartment with its hand-printed sign propped in her front window. Piano lessons. The upright was in the parlor, and while she taught, Mike had to stay in the bedroom and entertain Frankie. When it was warm enough and Frankie was napping, Mike took to the stoop outside where he played the harmonica. Even then, he could copy any song he heard on the radio. And our mom sang to us, said Frankie. Every night, twinkle, twinkle, little star, hush, little baby, are you sleeping? Then our mom started to get sick with sumption. Consumption, said Mike. Yeah. And she coughed all the time and got skinny, and one day she went to the hospital, and even the doctors couldn't fix her. It was sad, except I don't remember, because I was only two, but you remember, because you were six. So consumption is a disease that would make you cough, and it just kind of, well, consumed you. And then most, a lot of people at that time died from it. Yes, I do, whispered Mike. Granny had been giving a piano lesson to Mary Beth Flanagan from across the hall. When Mary Beth finished her piece, America the Beautiful, Granny shook her head and said, Mary Beth, I'd jump for joy if you'd learn that piece proper and put a pe little of your heart and soul into it. Practice this week and come back and make me proud. At that moment, his mother walked in from work at the diner, looked from Granny to Mary Beth Flanagan to Mike and fainted. When she came to, Granny ran to get help. Then she took Mama to the hospital while Mrs. Flanagan sat with Mike and Frankie. Only Granny came home. Day after day, Mike had stood at the front window watching for his mother. 
Granny would gently pull him away, but he'd wander back like a homing pigeon rooted to one post. It seemed there'd been no minutes or hours, just one long day of searching out that window and waiting. One long day that lasted two weeks until Granny told him his mother hadn't been strong enough for this world. What other world was there, and where was it? After that, Granny tried to interest him in storybooks and games, but nothing worked until she sat him next to her at the piano, and she taught lesson after lesson. Mike stayed at her side, his new perch, watching other children's fingers on the keys and listening to the metronome tick. One day, between students, Granny had left him sitting on the piano bench. He reached out toward the keyboard, placing his fingers at he, as he'd seen the others do, and pressed. But instead of a harmonious chord, it was a jarring and painful sound, as if his sadness had traveled from his fingers onto the keys, and the sounds repeated the awfulness he felt inside. With his fingers wide, he pounded on the keys over and over as the room filled with his grief. When Granny came back into the room and saw his wrenched face and his wild hands hammering away, she sank into a chair, all the while crying herself. That evening, she started teaching him proper. Each time he learned a song, it seemed that it mirrored his sorrow and anger and love. Granny said he had a God-given gift for music. Secretly, he thought his mother must have seen, sent the gift so that she could hear him playing from the other world. Sometimes he even imagined her humming along. Mike, are you listening? Frankie sat up on the bench in the cellar and shook his arm. Yeah, I'm listening. Granny took care of us and loved us. Yes, she did, said Mike. We didn't have a lot, but we always had her. Things had been difficult the last few years they lived with Granny. So many people were out of work. Piano lessons became a luxury few could afford. Granny's students dwindled to a small handful, and even those families often paid with food or a used jacket for Mikey or Frankie instead of money. Most months, Granny just squeaked by with the rent. Even so, weather permitting, Every Sunday afternoon, she threw open her front window and she and Mike took turns playing the piano for the entire neighborhood. Brahms, Chopin, Mozart, Debussy. She said people on hard times deserve to have beauty in their lives as much as anyone else, whether or not they could pay their rent or were walking to a bread line. A bread line was the place where people would get in, in line. It was like um, a food pantry where they would wait for food. Granny said that just because someone was poor didn't mean they were poor of heart. Then, when Granny got too old and delicate to take care of us anymore, she brought us to Bishop's because it was the only place with a piano, said Frankie. Mike closed his eyes. He could still see Granny standing in Pennyweather's office with a nurse at her side. Withered and trembling, she had hugged them one last time. Her voice had wavered be my sweet boys and promise to take care of each other. The right person will come and want two fine boys. I know it in my soul. The cellar seemed to close in on Mike. That's right, Frankie, he said, pushing tears from his cheek. She chose Bishop's because it had a piano. And then Granny went to the old folks home and she died, said Frankie. I miss her. Mike put his arm around him. And that's the end of the story, whispered Frankie. Nah, it's not the end, said Mike. There's more, remember? Someday we'll get away from Bishop's and go to... Come on, you're telling a story. New York City, said Frankie, waving his arm in an arc. The Big Apple. Granny went there to visit and loved it. We're going to live there, said Mike. It's going to be our city. We're going to take the train and get all fancied up and go to a concert at Carnegie Hall, just like Granny did, said Frankie. That's right, said Mike. She always wanted to take us there. There will be a big, shiny black piano, right, said Frankie, and a famous piano player in an orchestra. Right, said Mike. The theater will be full, even the top balconies. Granny said the balconies are golden and the seats are red, and all the musicians are dressed in black, and at the end... Let me say it, said Frankie. We will stand up and clap and yell, Bravo! Bravo! Mike nodded. 
He didn't tell Frankie that when he imagined the scene at Carnegie Hall, he didn't see himself in one of those plush red seats. He saw himself on stage in a black tuxedo standing next to the piano and bowing to the audience. And after the concert, you and me will go to dinner at a restaurant and order roasted beef and ice cream. It won't be like here, right, Mike? Mike looked down at Frankie in his tattered clothes, and he could hear the kid's stomach grumbling for dinner. No, I promise, it won't be like here. Okay, so your questions next say summarize the flashback in chapter 3. So that means, what was the main idea that we were getting from the flashback? We were, what were we seeing? We were seeing kind of how they wound up there, right? We were seeing that the mother was sick and died and that they were raised by their grandmother, but then she got sick and died. So we're seeing their journey and where they're from. Are they from a loving home? Yes, not very rich, but they've lost everybody except for each other. What dream does Mike and Frankie think about to remain optimistic? So what are they hoping for? What are they thinking about? Going to New York City, right? That's their dream. Their dream is that they will go to New York City one day. But I think another dream that we could put in there too is that that they would both be adopted by the same people. And I think they have that dream as well. Okay, those are the only two I want you to do today. Just to summarize and then what do Mike and Frankie think about. We'll describe penny weather tomorrow. I think in the next chapter we'll have a little bit more um, to help us with that as well. Okay, I love this book. I hope you're enjoying it. Have a good